In this video, we're going to take a look at some of the ways you might implement pagination in your Svelte application. We're going to start off by going through a couple diagrams here, and then we're going to move on to consuming from a third-party REST API, as well as learning how to do so with Prisma. So without pagination, the web would be pretty crazy, right? If a user went to the items page, the server would select all the items from the database and then just pass it in a massive payload back to the browser, right? Usually there's some type of limit set up where the API will set some type of upper limit. This is the max number of items you can request for any given page. Again, this is normally defined by the API. So in this case, we just have a limit of 10. So if the user just goes to slash items, they get the first 10 items from the table, right? And you can think of this as page one. Well, we can also take in limit and skip. So limit, you've seen that before. Basically, we're passing how many of these items we want to the API. We can also pass in skip, which maps to offset here. And basically that's saying, hey, skip the first 10 and give me 10 more. And this will be considered page two. And at a super high level is pretty much how it works, right? You define endpoints, you then query your data based upon that information passed in the query params, and then return that data back to the users. So let's look at an API that already has pretty solid pagination set up so we can get some inspiration and ideas and examples. And the API we're gonna take a look at is the dummy JSON API. And if we look at the products limit and skip products endpoint here, we can see that they're making a fetch request to products passing the query params of limit and skip, both of which in this case equal 10. And then we could check the response here. So it gives us an array of 10 products, skipping the first 10 as well. So we're starting at 11. It also gives us the total, which we're going to use to determine how many pages we're going to have based on the limit. So in this case, if the limit is 10, we can have 10 total pages, right? Because 10 times 10 is 100. So let's consume this API and see what it looks like to do so with Spell it. So in the example application here, we have a users page. We're just rendering out a couple of different users with their ID and their email address. We don't have any pagination set up yet though, nothing beyond rendering those users. However, if we check out our page.ts file, we can see that it kind of mirrors the dummy JSON API, right? We're getting the limit and skip from the URL search params. We're defaulting the limit to 10 and the skip to zero if nothing is provided. So if they just go to slash users like we have here, they're just going to get the first 10 users, right? And then I'm running a check here to say if the limit's over 100, then we're going to throw an error. So we definitely want to set some type of upper bound. And I'm sure that the dummy JSON endpoint already has this set up, but I'm just going to set it up here as well. And then I'm just making a fetch request and passing in the limit and skip, and then returning that data back to the page.svelte via the data prop, and then rendering out those users on the page. So let's see how we can implement some pagination here. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to set the page size variable. So this, how big are our pages going to be, or what is our default limit going to be? It's going to be 10 for me, but you could give your users the ability to adjust this just like you can in certain tables, how you can adjust if it's 25, 50, 100, you can do that if you'd like. The next thing we're gonna need is the total number of items. And remember, it returns that to us in the response. We can say total items is equal to data.users.total. And then we want to get the total pages from the total items in the page size. So we can set total pages to be equal to math.ceiling total items divided by page size. And the reason we're doing math.ceiling here is because if we had 81 total items, right, and our page size is 10, if it was to round down, we would only have eight pages when in reality we need nine total pages to see that last item. Okay. So that's why we're using ceiling there. And then we can come down here and we can just render out some links. So I have a class set up called pagination, which just adds some styling to these links, nothing crazy. But we want to render out a link for each page, right? So we can say each array total pages. So we're going to make an array that's the same size as total pages. So total pages in this case is going to be 10. So our array will have 10 different indexes, right? So we could say as underscore index, and we will just leave the value as an underscore because we're not going to use it. We're only going to be using the index here. And then I'm going to add a link and it's going to go to slash users question mark limit is going to be equal to page size and skip is going to be equal to page size times the index. And then for the inner text here, we'll just set this to index plus one. Now, the reason that we're doing page size times index here is because if we're on page one, right, index is zero, which means page size 10 times zero is going to equal zero. And that's what we want. We don't want to skip anything. We're on the first page. So our index is always going to be one behind our actual page number, which is why we have to add one to this to display it properly on our page. So now if I save this and go back into our application, we now have this pagination component set up here. We can click on the different pages. We're now on 11 through 20 on page two, three, so on and so forth. And we can get what page we're currently on. So we can actually highlight that active page. We need to get import page so we can get the search params. We'll then set current page equal to number page.url.searchparams.get. We're going to get the skip or if no skip is passed, we're going to make it zero and we're going to divide that by the page size. And this will tell us what our current page is. So then we can come down into our link here and adjust the styling based upon that data. 
So our current page will be aligned with our index. So if current page is equal to the index, then we want to just change the color to green. So now when we come back into our application, we can see that six is being highlighted here. If I go to five, we now have that highlighted. And that's like the bare minimum dead simple pagination, right? Now I know some of you may have search param phobia where you don't want anything in the address bar, which is pretty crazy to me considering that some of the most popular applications out there use a ton of query strings, but we can clean this up a bit. We just lose a bit of functionality without doing a bunch of extra work. So I'm going to show you another way that we can do this while cleaning it up a bit. So let's just create a new route. We're going to call it products. And we're also going to have a page inside of brackets inside of it, right? So this can be our param. We're going to have a page.ts in here, as well as a page.svelte. And I'm just going to copy over this one here like so. I'm also going to make a plus page.ts in the root of this products directory. And then all we're going to do inside of this root page.ts is throw a redirect to the first products page. So if someone goes to slash products, they're going to get taken to slash products slash one. So let's have a load function inside of the brackets page or the pr page params page.ts file. I said page like 10 times there. And we're just going to take in the params and we're going to get page is going to be equal to number params.page. And I'm sure you already can predict where I'm going with this. So we'll do get products page is going to be a number. The limit is going to be 10. And then we'll set up this pretty much the same request that we made earlier. And let me just bring in fetch here as well. So now here what we're doing is we kind of lose the ability for the user to set the limit. So of course there are ways you can get around this. You could do some type of cookie or something crazy um, to pass this information between the server and the client. But basically we're hard coding the limit here in our page.ts. And then what we're doing is we're passing that into the dummy JSON endpoint along with skip, except skip now is page minus one times limit. So if you think about this, it's kind of the opposite of what we're doing in the previous example, right? So we're getting the page, which is page one. We're taking one off it to put it at zero and then multiplying it by the limit. And that'll give us the limit that we would expect for whatever given page, right? So I went ahead and adjusted this to products. And then we can actually simplify this link a bit here. So we can change this link to just do products slash index plus one. So we wanna to go to the next page. Right. And now if we go take a look at our products page, you're going to see that we have our products here. And then as we navigate to each different page, we're getting the page we might expect to get. Now, one thing I forgot to change is the current page here. So we're not going to do this anymore. Instead, we're going to convert page dot params dot page into a number and then subtract one from that like so. So now we're on page four here. If we're on page five, the correct number should be highlighted. Now, last what we're going to cover is doing the same thing except with Prisma. So I essentially have the same setup as I had on the products page, except now I'm using a page.server because we're going to be interacting directly with our database through Prisma. So I've went ahead and set this up here. But what I will do is I would set up a function called get songs. And we're going to be getting some songs from a dummy database here. We're going to set the limit again, just as we did before. And then song is actually going to be await prisma.song.findMany. And what Prisma allows you to do is pass in skip. So for skip here, we'll skip page minus one times the limit, just as we did with the other endpoint. And then take is actually actually our limit. So we can just pass the limit like so. And then we'll just return those songs like this. And then we can actually get the total songs fairly easily as well. So we can say get song counts. Of course, you could just return this function directly and we'll just return await prisma.song.count like so. And then for this whole load function, we're just gonna return songs as get songs and we'll return the total songs as get song count. This way they run concurrently. I'm pretty sure we could actually just do this as well. Just return uh, prisma.song.count here instead of going through all that work up there. And then now on our page.svelte, we should have everything the same. All I did was change products to songs just as we did before. And then for total items now, it's going to be data.totalsongs instead of data.songs.total. So now if I go to songs, we're going to see that I get the first 10 songs and I click through here. You can see that pagination works just as you might expect. So there's a couple of different ways you can do pagination. Of course, there's obviously the way that you can just dump the entire data set in your client side and then manage the navigation that way. Way by just shuffling through filters and stuff. But this is the more Svelte kit way to do it. Ideally, probably with the query strings, but this way works as well. If you want to just do page numbers like this, you would just have to find some other way to pass the limit if the user was to be able to change that on your client side. So that's going to include this video. I hope it's been informative for you. If you got value out of the video, don't forget to drop a like. Thank you all so much for your support and I will see you in the next one.